Yo, 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 what is going on, IK Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are here to talk about a, a little theory crafting and somewhat of a proposal that I had really start, I started racking my brain around this because I, I was looking around the game and I noticed something, this is a little bit more related to KVK, and one of the things that popped up to me was how the current system works and i've started noticing this over some other kingdom builders as well and i i wanted to just have a little bit of a powwow share my thought and identify what i think is just an unnecessary kind of very over confusing hurdle for the average player and i wanted to take a shot at presenting an alternative but also explaining why i think the alternative is necessary and not to say that this is the only alternative, but that this is a good direction based on how the average player perceives KVK and also what you can get out of it. So let me first and foremost go ahead and show you what is it that I noticed. And so what I noticed was I was taking a look here and I thought to myself, okay, well, let me see if LOF is coming. And of course, before we guys always dive too far deep, if you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell. And if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord, pin comment, description down below. So we'll click on Legion of Frostborn. Then we'll go to Season. And this is just one of two ways that you can get here. But you'll notice that there are, right, how they have the season, the splits, uh, the season systems. So you have your prep season, you got season one, you got season two, you got season three, then we got conquest. Now, in short, the way that we understand it and how the system works is that the kingdoms that are in a season are the ones that are going to get matched up and, and basically playing against each other for all intents and purposes when matchmaking starts for that specific KVK season. But what I started noticing is that, you know, I'm looking here at the prep season and I'm thinking to myself, uh, I mean, what, there's, if I look at this, that's 12, right? That's one and a half KVKs because you need eight kingdoms. So that's, you know, again, don't get it wrong, right? They might wait until there's four more maybe before they start the next one. If they're doing certain timings, maybe they're starting them at certain intervals. But to me, it, it, it just makes it confusing. Uh, and then we look at season one. There's only one kingdom here, right? Uh, even though, yeah, you are doing some fighting, you still have some here that have different times that are left. Then you got season two. And you got two that are already in, and then you got some that are being prepped. And even this isn't that much, 12, I mean, you got, what is that, 16? So this actually is two king, a kingdoms worth. We get to season three, everyone's done fighting three. So you look at this, and it's the same thing. You got 16, so you got two KVKs worth. Then you get to conquest, right? And obviously you have the most uh, that's here. The thing that I find interesting when I look at the kingdoms and i look at the season system is that and don't get me wrong i i, I see what they're doing with uh, allowing you at a certain basically they're trying to create some kind of prerequisite requirement right some type of um, goal that your kingdom has to get to or an age how old the kingdom is right you, that, that it's had to get to to where you then unlock certain things uh, for example, as you progress in the KVK seasons, you get access to more higher cap levels for your immortals. You'll eventually unlock just other resources uh, and items uh, because of the fact that you're raising cap levels. Though, my main takeaway here, and this is really where, where I truly believe, is I just don't think there needs to be a season system. On one hand, I understand why they're separating it. A season system can benefit you because you'll play with kingdoms that are have played in the same KVKs that you have as far as the same number, right? They have the same amount of experience that you have. Um, number two, right, if, they, if they're trying to break up when they're releasing new pieces of content, depending on the season you're in, eh, that's kind of more of a fluff add to me, but okay, right, that would be number two. And then beyond that, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's not really any kind of hard reason to split groups up. If you think about it, once you get to Conquest, which is the last KVK season, everyone just gets put into the same group. 
right? So all you're really doing is just adding some training wheels along the way up until you get to that point. It would be so much easier for you to just do something where, okay, I can understand if you want to sell me on giving New Kingdoms a kind of practice run-through experience where maybe you do it how some other kingdom builders do it where and this is where you kind of get into two options right i truly believe you can either do it and let's just see if we can take oh, i don't know if i could take a look at the entire kingdom list i will look at it this way so we'll just look at prep season so the way i i look at it is i would say you can do this one of two ways you can take the eight kingdoms at a time right which would be 180 through 173 and, and and you just already have a preset right you could even do this through like a bracket bracket and then it goes into the next set and those kingdoms are going to be in the first kvk group or you can do it this way you can look at each of the kingdoms uh, based on uh, based on them going into their first kvk right so what you would do is you would take you know, some kind of metric, whether you look at, for example, the top 300 uh, strongest players, right? We just add up their, their Lord power. If you want to factor in anything else, sure. But if you're just, if we're just, if I'm just giving a very raw, basic example, you would look at that. So you look at the top 300 for each faction, and then you have your top 300 based on Lord power. You total that up. That's your sum average. And then you would look at with a margin of error, you know, if you want to say it's, you know, for a couple million or something, however much, right? A little bit of margin. And then you would look for other kingdoms that are around that same level. The reason I say this and the reason why this could work as well is because remember, it's not a matter of the new kingdoms that are out. Uh, like all of the new kingdoms, right? It's not like you're saying you're going to put 162 against 180 or it's going to be these four versus the, these four. Remember, you could also get matched up with older kingdoms that just have lower power now yes on one on one side you can make the argument that okay well because you're age gating the kingdoms right this kind of gets back to the whole thing is that instead of age gating based on kvk seasons right or saying hey we're gonna unlock this content once you get there what they could just do is just uh based on how old the kingdom is right you could say at day 90 or day 120 you're going to get this now you can still make the argument that yeah that would obviously make it harder to get paired up with a older kingdom versus a newer kingdom but one of the things it would do is allow for you to have a wider pool early on where you could still get matched up against kingdoms that might have just had a lot of war right so your kingdom, when it comes up, you might get matched up with a kingdom that's 40 days old or, th or, or 50 days old, for example. Um, right? To me, it just seems as though it, it would be, it's almost as though, like, why add in these systems? Instead, just make it where once you hit a certain chronicle, right? Like, why not just add a few more chronicles on and then you unlock this? Or, better yet, just make these passive, right? Why even try and gate these additional features for kvk seasons and i guess that would maybe be the third point going back to what going back to the beginning is maybe that's another reason why you'd want to keep playing in a kingdom for future kvk seasons because you'll eventually unlock these things but in short to me it just seems like it's too much of a workaround right if you're just going to increase cap levels and everything like you're like it, it already has been doing then just do it passively right it, to me and and yes we can make the argument that that may go against what some of us have said earlier on because initially again as we've mentioned myself included i just didn't think there was a need at all to race levels and if they did do it right they should stagger it out that way but when you're looking at how the kvk system works to me it's okay cool right you want to give them one go in the beginning and you want to just say hey we're going to either pair the first eight kingdoms or we'll do it where um we'll, we'll do it where you have uh gosh what was the other thing i was just saying there is oh so yeah where you'll do it where you take like the top 300 power and then you range it based on uh, you know kingdoms that are like one day to 50 days old or something like that right or one day to 90 days old that are going into their first kvk 
And, and now that I think about that as I'm saying that out loud, that might be a little harder and rougher to do. It, it, it almost seems just kind of going back to the organic way of just saying, hey, man, the first eight kingdoms. Or what you do is because typically, right, if you have long interval times between kingdoms are opening, usually the kingdoms that are um, younger or older in that continent. So an example would be this. If we put 180 versus 173, well, you know, 180 is two days and, and 20 hours old. But if I look at 173, they're 30 days, right? So just from looking at this, if we put eight kingdoms together, you can make the argument that 173 would have an advantage because they've had more time to develop. So, and again, this is the challenge when you're doing your kvks like this when you're staggering them out is that you just may not always have enough kingdoms in a kvk season it's just so much extra work i guess that's kind of my point when i'm touching and talking about all of this is that we need to work smarter not harder and in in this regard how i like i said i, th I really think how i would do it is you either you either have to and, and that's the thing, right? It does depend on just how popular the game is, how many downloads it's getting. It's a lot easier if you have consistent kingdom interval opening times with uh, once a new kingdom comes out to be, because then you have, a, you have more kingdoms that are closer in age. So it's easier to do an eight kingdom set or a larger kingdom set for your KVK because then you might only have a week gap from when the first kingdom to the, la to the eighth kingdom right in that continent. Otherwise, if you don't have that, then you may just have to consider doing four kingdoms, right? I mean, if you think about the KVK map, you can just put each kingdom in a corner, have the other cities be neutral, and the system can still work out that way. These are things that require kind of future planning, like understanding that kingdom intervals can be sporadic. They can be short or they can be long depending on demand at that given time. How many downloads the game is getting, how many players are actively playing, how many players are being retained that are still playing for a long period of time. Those are all things that factor into how quickly or how long a new kingdom will take to open up. And then that also directly factors into your going into your first KVK experience and then also has a... Um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Right, It has a... Uh, a ripple effect going beyond kvk prep season into kvk one two three and then conquest so don't get me wrong it's easier once you get to conquest because you have all the kingdoms that are already there but the idea is that you can get to con you can get to something like a conquest faster where you basically have the first kvk as just the kind of trial learn everything and then you put everyone into into the big pool where you start uh matching them up based on those factors um right the challenge is is that it's almost like ik has kind of created somewhat of an imbalance here uh, or, or like d deep advantages disadvantages um which is stifled how many kingdoms can get into a kvk season because if you wanted to try and get into a big pool like that and you did it early it would be it would be difficult currently to do that because you'd have kingdoms that would be for at level 40 capped you'd have other kingdoms that would be uh, 50 capped so right these are you know along with um, other areas that just create wider gaps um, so again it's i don't know i mean it's it's not to say that i think the system currently is is bad but i do think that there is some room for improvement because it, it just makes it difficult when you have and others probably don't really care too much but um, you know especially if you already just know what your kvk season is going to be it's just these are things to think about Right. Instead of going into a KVK season with eight groups, it's it's probably easier just to do sets of four, um, right? And then you just kind of increase that appropriately based on what the intervals are. It's almost as though you use your KVK map as a shell. You can fit up to. Think of it as an up to eight kingdoms on the KVK map. It doesn't always have to be eight kingdoms. You could end up having two kingdoms. Now I think appropriately somewhere that's either four, six, or eight is probably a, is a better outlook. But I think that in situations like this where you have wide times, like if I look at 180, two days, um, 30 days, 28 day difference, then I look at 180 to 177, 14 days, right? Uh, which is a 12 day difference. So I would rather have 180 through 177 at a 12 day difference than I would 180 through 173, where you're basically already giving advantages to the older kingdoms because they'd have a, they'd had, they've had a longer time to establish, right? And that's only if it plays out that way. Um, of course, you're still going to get um, sets that are matched 
um, going into prep season uh, like others did going into it. But these are just things to think about, right? Because the one thing that you cannot control is the age of the kingdom, uh, right? I mean, it's loosely controllable based on popularity, but specifically when you're going into KVK, that's the one thing that is a flat advantage or a flat disadvantage time, which means the average day that a player is progressing. And that's not something that you can easily really catch up to or influence in a very heavy, impactful way. It just depends on the health of that kingdom going in. Um, so, uh, and obviously not only just going in, but, you know, through, through a developed uh, period of time with how things play out in, in, in said or any kingdom for that matter. <sighs> okay. Part of me feels like I've been doing a little bit of rambling and then part of me feels as though I've maybe said some really good quality stuff. <laughs> so, but I'm somewhere in the middle right now. With all of that being said, I would love to know what you guys think, right? Did I make sense on anything I was just saying? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, do you even have another idea, another suggestion that you would provide, um, right? If you're kind of, you know, picking up what I'm putting down here on how I'm viewing the kind of KVK seasons. Uh, in short, I guess as my last nod, this is, it, it, to me, it just seems like it's too much, right? In my opinion, I feel like we should just have a prep season and then you should just have the KVK main season, right? Or if you just want to call it conquest, it's just prep and conquest. Like to me, just the stuff in between, it just comes off as too much. And... Sure, this might not really impact the average everyday player from looking at this screen, but t t to me, it, it's just, it, I, I really think less is more, especially in these types of situations. Um, that there has to maybe be some type of more creative or efficient and effective way to go about doing this. But like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. That's it for me. Until next time, I'll catch you later.